What's up guys? What's growing on? I've got a uh, short video for you here today. I'm sitting in the front food forest and hopefully I'm kind of in between winds. But right here behind me, I have everbearing mulberry. And this is kind of... Um, been planted here on a fence. So we planted this all the way down the market garden with the original intention of espaliering it. So actually growing it on the fence and by doing that and tying those branches, you know, and training them to actually follow the, the fence, that produces fruiting more. Well, you know, when you have 45 of those planted on a fence, that's a lot of work. Um, we've kind of stopped the idea of the espalier, but we still have them on the fence over here. So the reason I'm doing these videos, I've talked about ever bearing mulberries with you guys before, but we received a lot of comments. Um, I received a lot of messages, a lot of emails, you know, from people that are just getting food forests going or just starting to get into fruit trees or edibles, whatever it may be, they always ask me, what are those top ones? What would you suggest, you know, we start with? So this video is gonna be a top for it three that I would suggest, you know, planting in your food forest, getting started with, because these are, um, quite rewarding, you know, typically fairly bulletproof, and they give you a lot back. You know, they're constantly fruiting multiple times a year. So I say that because the ever-bearing mulberry has mulberries on it right now. So instead of doing the espalier like we were originally doing, we're pruning these probably about six foot above the fence. Every time we prune them, it's almost like another trick for us because it gets them to fruit again. So, you know, it's another kind of pro tip for you. I think I mentioned that in one of my other videos. Check it out. You know, but when you prune these, it throws the tree into some type of shock and gets them to fruit again. It's happened to us multiple times. I've seen it on not just the Everbearing, but the Giant, the Pakistani, all the varieties of mulberry. So let's go check it out. So I don't know if you guys caught that video a couple of days ago with Melissa, but we just harvested this Roselle tea. This isn't last year's harvest. This is, um, or this is last year's harvest. This isn't the harvest we just made. So we're just dehydrating that now, but we pretty much look at this as Kool-Aid in the summertime. Um, anybody that's ever had here, you know, been here and had this, kids especially, they love it. They always ask for it when they come back. So if you haven't seen it, check out Mel's video, put the link here above and, uh, you know, see what we do with this. So right here, I've got these Everbearing mulberries for you guys. And you can see they're, you know, they're very tiny berries. And they're quite delicious. Mmm. I almost say they're like a, um, a blueberry and a raspberry put together. So I always get, you know, kids, clients that want blueberries. Blueberries are kind of tough. They're a little bit finicky. Highly suggest the Everbearing Mulberry because like I said, fruits multiple times a year. So right now, I've got young flowers on here, young fruit on here, ripe fruit on here. And it always seems to be like that. And if it's not, I prune them and it seems to get it to do it again. So these aren't on any irrigation, kind of like in that whole thrive on neglect. and. The leaves are a little ugly right now. There's some yellow leaves. They have some small holes in them. Typically something that starts to happen towards the end of season. So these will go dormant for you in the winter time. So they'll be dropping their leaves here you know, next month or two. Not gonna have any leaves through the winter. That is also the better time to propagate. So number one on my list, ever bearing mulberry. Fruit tree number two, I'm on the side of my house and I kind of have a, a beat up battered example behind me, but I have a Montinga, or also known as a strawberry tree, Jamaican cherry, there's many names for this tree. Let's see if I can get this guy to catch focus. There we go. And the best part about the tree, or the fruit, it kind of tastes like cotton candy. Absolutely delicious. It's like an explosion of cotton candy in your mouth. So really like this tree if you're in a subtropical environment because they fruit multiple times a year. So this, like the Everbearing Mulberry, it's not gonna just give you that one crop. You know, they actually start fruiting very quickly, sometimes within a couple of months of planting them, and then comes on multiple times a year. This is another one, it would probably be 35 foot tall now if I didn't prune it. So it is a very aggressive grower, does need to be pruned pretty often. Right now it's a little bit of a, a beat up, battered example. Um, just went through a hurricane here in Florida, kind of getting towards the winter time. It does slow down a little bit on production in the winter time, but you know, right here behind me, just over my head you can see I mean it always you know there's young fruits on here there's fruits that are probably fruits that are probably half ripe and there's fruits that are ripe like the one that I just showed you in Eaton so number two on my list strawberry tree Montinga Jamaican cherry whatever you want to call it you know if you're looking for that first tree to get going highly suggest planting this one it's quite rewarding starts giving you back fairly quick What's up guys, so fruit tree number three. You got me over here in the greenhouse, a little warm out today. Got the shades back on because the sun's kicking. So Barbados cherries here behind me. 
Malpigia emerginata. So like any of these, I probably messed up that second part a little bit, but like with any of these fruit trees, getting into those botanical names is really gonna narrow it down, especially if you're you know somewhere on the other side of the globe and it doesn't go by you know Barbados cherry or acerola cherry. There's a lot of different names for this tree also. So this is the number three on my list and probably my favorite to be honest with you. And I'll show you what I got going on right now. I have some dwarfs and some full size. So there's a little dwarf here behind me. I'll show you that in a second. And it was covered in fruit, young ones, ripe ones. And I think the full size ones are a little better. Dwarfs probably just a little bit more novelty. But what's interesting about this one is, and I, I got into more detail probably on my Barbados cherry vi you know, video. I'll put that link above for you or in the description. Were originally grown commercially for vitamin C. So before they genetically modified absorbic acid, you know, acerola was grown with this cherry, and this is that little dwarf one. Has a little bit of a punch to it. Not as much as the larger ones did. And they have some small seeds in them. I typically spit those out. I don't swallow them. I don't think they're poisonous. If you were too, though, I will tell you, the bigger ones, I have a variety. When you chew on the seed, it actually has a really sweet flavor that comes out of it. This one's not like that. I have probably three different varieties of Barbados cherry grown in this greenhouse. So this one makes the number three on my list because it's fruiting almost all year long. This is a smaller tree to you. This isn't as aggressive as the, you know, strawberry tree would be for y'all. Um, they're super high in vitamin C. It's like having a health food store in your backyard. So this one's really rewarding. Um, you know, constantly has fruit on it. Always has something to give you. Really easy to grow. I'd say the only problem you'd want, it, you know, really watches, you know, cold tolerance, you know, pushing it anywhere. You know, I have it in the greenhouse here because we do get down into freezing. Um, I have had them frost to the ground in exposed areas. Didn't think they'd come back, and those trees did come back. What y'all are hearing behind me? Yeah, that, that's when I cut the greenhouse in that live video. So we still haven't even repaired that. I just got the tape in the mail. Every time I go to do it, there's a lot of dew on here. I need to do it in the evening, you know, not the morning. And this last week, we've had a ton of wind. So top three trees, I'm gonna stop yapping here. Barbados cherry, strawberry tree, and the Everbearing Mulberry. Hope y'all enjoyed this short video. It probably wasn't short, but please like, subscribe, and share.